Hey, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we're gonna be shooting Hornady's Precision Hunter with 145 grain ELDX bullet in 270 Winchester. And we'll take a quick look at the box and ammo for that Hornady Precision Hunter 270 load. Flip it around to the back. Here's your factory promo information, your advertisement here. Go ahead and pause and read that if you would like to. Flip it over to the side. Here is your velocity info. It doesn't have a barrel length listed, unfortunately, so we'll see how close we get to 2970. But something I'd like to point out, because on my last Hornady Precision Hunter video with the ELDX bullet, it was my 6.5 Creedmoor test, um, people want to argue incessantly in the comments that the bullet is designed to explode into a million pieces um, on impact and that's just not at all true that's not what is advertised that's not what is purported to happen it is advertised as holding together and expanding across a wide range of velocities and that 6.5 Creedmoor load I tested impacted at below well below 2660 feet per second and all three bullets completely exploded on an impact that's why I called it a catastrophic fail because it objectively catastrophically failed versus what is advertised directly on the box what it is supposedly made to do right that's why it was a catastrophic fail and people still want to argue and I guess lie to themselves um, that it's designed to be a frangible explosive bullet when it's not right now if it had a picture of a million little bits and pieces and said this bullet explodes on impact I wouldn't call it a catastrophic fail I would call it a varmint bullet yeah but I wouldn't call it a catastrophic fail but when it when when a, when a bullet doesn't do what it's advertised to do catastrophically it is a fail in my book so that's why I called it that we will see how the 270 load does because it is going to be impacting substantially faster than that top end velocity as shown here who knows what's supposed to happen at that point but what i can tell you is not every elk or mule deer or whatever you're hunting with this stuff steps out at 400 yards sometimes you do get that 100 yard shot and then what happens then what are you supposed to do when you have a bullet that blows up into a million pieces not that this one is going to do that but the 6.5 creedmoor version absolutely did so let's go ahead and open this up take a look Nice clean looking brass per standard with Hornady. Here's one of the cartridges. There's your little ballistic tip up front. We'll see how it does. And the test rifle today is going to be my Winchester Model 70 Featherweight, chambered in 270, of course. It's got a 22 inch barrel. Up top, I've got a Swarovski Z3, 3 to 10 by 42. And bringing up the rear, of course, I've got one of my Mason leather cartridge cuffs. I've got 270 stamped right in. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And I have got to show you, coming around to the other side, I've got my white tail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. All right, y'all, it's the moment of truth. I'm down here at the blocks after shooting those 145 grain Hornady Precision Hunter ELDX bullets out of the 270 Winchester. Did they blow up on impact? Did they fragment into a million pieces like the 6.5 Creedmoor ones did for some reason? Let's take a look. No, they did not. We actually captured all three bullets and they are for the most part intact. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. Here's one right there. There's one right there. There's one right there. Let's look at penetration. So it's kind of hard to tell. It's right there. We got about, I'm going to call it 22 inches. I'm going to call this one, I'm going to round up. I'm going to call that 25 inches. And then where's the other one? Oh, it's way over there. That one's at about the 23, no, 22 inch mark. So we have three ELDX bullets that for the most part held together and actually penetrated pretty good. And these things were trucking along really fast out of the 270 Winchester. We'll look at velocity in a second. Let's go over to the first block. And it is, it is shredded pretty good in here. 
we've got a really explosive wound cavity that opens up almost immediately inside the block, goes back, starts to taper off, and really ends at about the 14, 13 and a half inch mark. You could call it tapering off right here even at the nine inch mark. That's gonna knock a whitetail on its butt, that's for sure. Now seeing this, these 270 ELDX bullets are going quite a bit faster than the 6.5 Creedmoor load that I tested where the bullets completely exploded. All three shots totally blew up the bullets. There was almost nothing left. Why did these ones hold together? Why did those ones blow up? I have no idea. The only thing I can chalk it up to is inconsistency in manufacture of the bullet. That's just theorizing. I have no idea, but it is what it is and I'm gonna report it. And let's go ahead and take a look at the velocities for that 270 ELDX load. Ooh, it looks like we got a duplicate velocity. Our high was 28.36, our low was 28.07, and our average was 28.20. And here are those 145 grain ELDX bullets out of the gel. First, we'll talk about weight retention. We saw 94, 99, and 109 grains for an average of 101 grains retained weight. That is 69% weight retention. Pretty good for the type of bullet that it is. And now on to expansion. We saw 0 0.68, 0 0.71, and 0 0.74 inches for an average of 0 0.71 inches expanded diameter. That works out to 2.6x expansion. These things definitely do open up, that's for sure. And now on to velocity. We saw 2836 for the high, 2807 for the low, and 2820 for the average versus the factory build velocity of 2970. So we came in on average 150 feet per second slow. That is pretty darn slow compared to the build velocity. No doubt they're using a longer barrel, which they shouldn't because almost every 270 out there now has a 22 inch barrel, not 24, not 26. It's not 1960 where we're hunting with pre-64 Winchesters with 24 inch barrels. Almost everyone is using a 22 inch barrel in these standard calibers like 270. So let's get with the time manufacturers because these velocities you're printing on the boxes just are not realistic. And the problem I have with that is that people take that information and input it into ballistics calculators and calculate drop at range and they're shooting at game like that and wounding animals, missing, stuff like that. That's why we need realistic data and that's what I'm here giving you. Now on to penetration. We saw 22 inches, 22 inches, and 25 inches for an average of 23 inches of penetration. That is right there on par with a lot of really good 270 and 30 aught six loads that I've tested. So I'm really happy with that. That's gonna do what you need it to. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Hornady Precision Hunter 145 grain ELDX load out of the 270 Winchester. We had pretty decent weight retention, 69% weight retention, Really good expansion, 2.6x expansion. It wasn't super uniform. The bullets were pretty mangled and mashed up looking, but hey, it may, it'll it make a big old hole, that's for sure. And then velocity-wise, we were quite a bit low factory build velocity, 150 feet per second low to be precise. I've seen better, I've seen worse. This is sort of par for the course. I'm not super disappointed with it. If you happen to be one of the handful of people out there hunting with a 24 inch barreled 270 Winchester because pretty much nobody is since the 1970s, most of your 270s, 30-06s, your standard deer calibers have had 22 inch barrels. The amount of people hunting with 24 inch barreled standard calibers is almost none. So I don't know why the factories test with these long barrels. It's kind of ridiculous. But if you're one of those people, you might be able to wring out some more feet per second out of this stuff. But regardless, it's still going really fast. And then penetration wise, pretty good penetration, 23 inches on average. That'll definitely do the job for whatever you need it to. And then we're gonna talk about kinetic energy. So with a 145 grain bullet, averaging 2,820 feet per second at the muzzle, we're looking at 2,561 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. That's more than enough for any whitetail or elk or anything like that at reasonable ranges. And I'm gonna start rolling in a kinetic energy bit into every video going forward. It's just another piece of data that we can use to compare loads to each other. All in all, I'm actually really happy with the performance of this Hornady Precision Hunter ELDX load. We all remember, and if you don't, go back and watch the video, 
the 6.5 Creedmoor ELDX load, the Hornady Precision Hunter, that stuff absolutely failed. It was catastrophic. It exploded on impact into a million pieces. All three bullets did. And that is not what this ammo is supposed to do. People want to argue with me in the comments incessantly. It's supposed to be a frangible bullet. No, it is not. Flip the box over and look at Hornady's own advertisement. It's supposed to hold together. And this stuff actually did. So I'm happy with the performance. If you have used this stuff, let me and everybody else know down in the comments how you liked it. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.